Dave, tell us about your rugby journey. Where did it all begin for you as a player and where did it all start with Guildford? Um, as a player, I, I grew up in a small village outside Bath and my dad took me down to uh, play for Bath Minis at under six and my brother under sevens and all the way up, I suppose, and played juniors, seniors, ball boys for Bath, um, went into the, uh, yeah, managed to you know, make my debut, I think it was 19 years old, um, going into the change room, you know, Matt Perry, the like, uh, asking what the ball boy's doing in here and I've actually come to play rugby, so that was, uh, that was quite an experience for me and then so sort of things didn't necessarily move as quickly as I wanted to at Bath, so I went to Saints, um, which wasn't a great experience, uh, Sale, which was sort of an interim, and then Cornish Pirates, which were a fantastic three years, um, and then got the opportunity to come to Harlequins, uh, and I've sort of not looked back since really, but now I've come into my fifth year at Harlequins and sort of, I suppose, found my, uh, my spiritual rugby home here, so that's been really good. And where did it all start with Guildford? And, as yeah, well, I suppose with the coaching side at Harlequins, I had Ian Davis as my um, forwards coach and yeah. then head coach. He mentored me through my level three. I went to St Just, did a couple of years there as a coach, and then when I moved up to Guildford, there was an opportunity um, four years ago now. I think it was five years, fifth season. So yeah. came down to Guildford, met the guys, and they're you know aspirational club with big ambitions and sort of you know just down the road from training as well. Helped me out. <laughs> it's always nice, and um, the, you know I've been out here ever since. Before we talk about the season and the team, I have to ask, how do you manage match days with your Harlequins career at, and Guildford? Um, well, we're lucky enough to have the support from the club at Guildford that we've got four coaches, myself, Kyle Sinclair, Ross Chisholm and Matt Hawkes. Mm -hmm. So myself, Kyle and Ross do Tuesdays and Thursdays and then Matt Hawkes does Tuesdays and Saturdays. So he's our match day coach. Yeah. We film every game as well, which is brilliant. We've got a guy, um, Paul Bridgeton, who does the filming. So he does an excellent job. So we, we put you know, fresh eyes on it on a Sunday when we get the film through. And then Matt obviously makes decisions, uh, key decisions for match day. Uh, obviously, if you play Harlequins, you can't make all the Saturday games, yeah. but we do get to some because of the Friday, Sunday fixture list. I think last season I got to 12 out of 26. So yeah. I was pretty happy with yeah. that. And the ones we weren't there for, we managed to get on the right side you know, more often than not. So that was good. In your experience, what is the difference between Level 1 Rugby and the National Leagues? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, not a lot from my experience. I've had this argument and debate many times with a few of the Harlequins players, actually. Um, it's they're obviously the, the fitter, uh, faster, you know, there's bigger sacrifices made at the top, top end of the game and how many hours they spent holding a rugby ball. But actually, when it comes down to it, you, you have some real good players within the National Leagues and, you know, you'll see examples of that throughout any games you, you go and watch on a Saturday. And I've seen guys who have moved up from National 3 Championship and not on play for England. And I've seen guys who've come down from the Championship and National 3 and not, you know, been uh, the best player on the pitch at all. So. Yeah. Rugby level is really, really high in this in this sort of uh, area as well, especially. So that's good for any aspiring player. Just know that you still can move up the grades. What advice would you give to any young aspiring players who want to make a career out of rugby? Um, well, I suppose you know the great example for me was this sacrifice versus choice. Sorry. So you know the sacrifice for me, and I, you know I've got an older brother. He was always the better rugby player, but I sacrificed maybe a few nights out. Um, that extra hamburger, whatever it was, you know, before <laughs> for a match, and yeah. I, you know, people would look at me now and say you, you haven't sacrificed much recently, but fair enough. Um, but yeah, my brother was always a better player, but he, he chose to maybe have a few extra drinks with his mates, um, and maybe didn't quite make the right decision at the right time. Where my old man, my dad, you know, encouraged me yeah. to sacrifice a little bit more, and it'd be worth it in the end. And he, he was right. You know, we used to sort of go to bed at eight o'clock on a Friday. People should laugh at me. Yeah. Then all my mates were out. But actually, I was getting up early and then playing a game on Saturday and eventually it sort of paid off, so I was pretty happy about that. On to the season, how have the boys adapted to, uh, to National 3 Rugby? Well, first game of the season, it was brilliant. We had a fantastic win against uh, Shelford. I did warn the boys it was a weekend Shelford side, but still they were texting me at t midnight saying we're going to win the league, so that was good. Really good uh, atmosphere. And then we got brought down to earth straight away the week after at Dawkins, so actually it was a, it was a good learning curve for our guys. And, We've, we've adapted well at home, we've managed to only get one win on the road, so that's, that's always tough, um, but they know we've, we've gone up a league, yeah. you know, the, the pace of the game's quicker, and we saw at Wimbledon last uh, weekend, or two weekends ago, sorry, you make a mistake, they punish you, and we made yeah. three against Wimbledon, that was 21 points, and that was game over, um, and they're a quality outfit, as are some of the other big, big teams in the league, and if we want to really challenge, we've got to cut out the mistakes and yeah. or react a little bit quicker. Four wins from nine, a mixed season so far, where do you think you lost out on some of those close defeats and what were the lessons that the boys learned? Um, initially, I'd say belief, especially mm -hmm. going into that Sutton and Epsom game. They got promoted with us, so we knew very much a lot about them. And for 65 minutes, we controlled the game. We were the better side, no doubt in my mind. Um, and then we just let them back into it. We didn't really believe we were going to win. 
Um, and then we managed to uh, sort of get over that, I, I suppose, four or five weeks later, really, versus Amersham, when we got our first victory yeah. away and realised we are, you know, in this league. We've, we've had our lessons, though. Tunbridge away and Hartford away, they've shown us, you know, how tough this league can be and how uncompromising it is. I think 33-10 and 52-10 speaks volumes, really. Yeah. So, you know, we'll, we'll, go, we'll move forward, but we've got a massive five-game, you know, uh, sort of period now coming to Christmas, um, and it starts at Westcombe Park. So who better than second place in the league? They've only lost once all season. They beat Wimbledon, you know, um, for us to test ourselves up against, you know, and try and put our home record on the line again. As you said, massive game this weekend against Westcombe Park. How have you prepared the boys for them and how do you go about beating Westcombe Park? Um, well, luckily, I know the Wimbledon coach <laughs> quite well, Nick Evans. So we managed to sneak a bit of footage off him. Um, you can only do so much though because of the players turn over turn around at this level, yeah. you know, they're different personnel all the time, but we have a little look at trends and stuff like that. So I'll prepare the guys tonight with a few line outs, uh, a few key plays they might want to run. Um, but a lot of it's down to mental preparation, um, doing the basics right for us and cutting out those mistakes. And if we do make mistakes, they're not costing us seven, 14, 21 points, maybe three, six, nine, yeah. and it gives us a chance. And you know, the weekend we've got a top quality referee as well, Richard Horton. So that's going to give the guys a little bit of edge as well to say, right, actually, the decisions are going to be made, are going to be good ones, back the referee's decision, yeah. and, and let's win the game sort of on merit. Dave, absolute pleasure. Really appreciate your time. Best of luck. No worries. Thanks very much. Thank you, Cheers, guys. Cheers.